What's going on everybody? This is Daniel Worthy. Today we're going to be doing a jQuery tutorial on how to create a drag and drop quick reorder admin screen. The technology behind this is very simplistic on the front end. It's utilizing jQuery and jQuery UI. On the back end it's going to vary depending on your server technology. So to start things off we're going to need two resources. We're going to need jQuery. We're going to use the latest version of jQuery at this point in time, which is jQuery 1.11. And we're going to utilize jQuery UI. jQuery UI, jQuery UI is a large set of optimized jQuery widgets and uh, functionality that will that allows you to create some very nice user experiences. To th start things off, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can get the source code off of my GitHub page. Just go to github.com slash worthyd. It's inside of my jQuery training project. This was primarily the project I did my last video series on. I didn't really feel like there was the need to create a whole new project for this, so you can find the code inside of there. We're working within four files, a start, .html, a finish.html, and then a main CSS, and our drag and drop icon. So if you want to see the final product, what I have on our screen right here, that has actual working drag and drop, and a button that posts the current order of the, the current ID order, which is what we would send to our server. Uh, you look inside the finish.html, and, in, and to start things off, uh, obviously everything's going to be inside of the start.html which has zero drag and drop functionality. To get what we need we're going to just hop over to jQuery.com make sure that we do have the latest version of jQuery we're on yep we're on 1.11 so inside of start.html I'm just going to copy a bit of script and paste it in. We're working inside of Vim today uh, there's no need to utilize Visual Studio for this project since we're only working inside of HTML files. Now with jQuery UI we can do a custom build. Custom builds very nice because you select only the components you want so we would we'd toggle all and just click on sortable and it creates or it will create a version of this that has all sorts of fun stuff inside of it that we may or may not need. However, we're going to go and utilize a CDN version of it, the whole shebang, the whole code base. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, but for something simple like this, it's not going to matter that much. Now, I'm going to warn you, I'm trying not to say uh like crazy inside of this tutorial video is brought to my attention. I say it way too much. And so I'm going to try real hard not to say uh too much. So please forgive me. I'm, I'm trying real hard. So to start things off inside of our code we need to throw a document.ready inside of our first script tag. So we're going to we're going to just just you know dollar sign open parentheses document.ready there's another shortcut way of doing this, but we are just going to stick with this method, this approach. So we have our document.ready function. You'll notice in between the two pages, the first one we have our save button hidden. Now we're going to add some functionality later to show and hide this based on whether or not an item has been updated or drag it and dropped. So to start things off, we are going to just hide that button. Just uh, so the button I has an ID of button save. So we will just dollar sign or dollar sign open param hashtag button save dot hide save and refresh our page and we see that it immediately hides on page load. Now we need to I don't like Vim's indenting but that's okay. We'll work with it. This may not be very pretty but it's good for what we're trying to do. So we are going to now use the jQuery selector and select 
our unor unordered list and utilize the plugin sortable for it. We'll just do sortable and without any options and we'll see what we get with it. So we, we now drag and drop and you will notice that anywhere you click you can drag and drop this may not be ideal for all situations due to the fact that maybe you have a some sort of click event on the inside of this that you don't want the uh, the drag and drop to affect with uh, so <coughs> excuse me so we are going to need to add what's called a handle to this well what this will do is we can specifically target the drag and drop to only execute when you click on let's say we're going to use the, the this gif of up and down left right um, so we're going to pass in some options now the option for this is called handle and it will just be image container so if you look inside of each one of these objects there is image container and an image inside of that if we switch over to our page we should and you try to click and drag inside of any of the elements it doesn't work but also if you do that it doesn't work either what am I doing now Obviously, I have a bad selector in there. And I just can't spell. That's 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 the problem right there. So, there we go. It only drags and drops if you click on that icon. It's a little bit of a cleanliness thing. Now, Another thing that we can do to make this a little bit more snazzy is you'll notice that it just immediately snaps back into the position that it was in if you don't drop it on a specific cell. We can add a an option called revert to add a nice little animation to it and it'll animate back to its original spot. So we now have probably about half second to full second animation delay on that. Makes it look a lot nicer. Makes whoever using it think that you're a total badass when it comes to JavaScript. But in actuality, it's a fairly simple line of code. One other thing we can do to make it look a little bit better is add an opacity while the element is being drug or dragged around so if you're working with a large list of items you can see below it and see what you're holding it over a few more things we're going to utilize to make this look a little bit better uh, one thing that depending on your scenario you may need to use if this was scale if this was the list if this list was let's say 250 books you're going to have a scroll bar on your right now the problem we would have with this is that you would drag this down and try to scroll and it may not scroll how you want it to there's an option that we can use called scroll if I could spell I could do it right refresh that and we won't really see anything here that that does that but it's one of those things you're just going to need to take my word for it <coughs> excuse me now one thing we're going to do for this last part is you'll notice that when we actually drag and drop we then show the save button we're going to utilize a, a function called just on essentially on update we're gonna fire off just some JavaScript to show that button. Nothing too fancy. 
uh, we're not going to check to see if the order is the same as it was before or not. That may be something you would want to look into if, if you desire. It's a little overkill if you ask me, but you know, whatever your application needs. Update is the option we're going to be pass we're going to be utilizing. Unfortunately, it's not on update or anything like that. It's just update. And inside of this, we're just going to we're going to reselect it. Technically, we could cache the selector. I'm mean, this is like carnal sin to me. So, but we're just going to work with it. Okay, so on when we drop our sortable object now, it's going to show our save button. Huh, so I guess if you initially do just let go and Yeah, that's cool. So right there, bam, we got a save button now. Save button doesn't do anything though, so what good does it do for us? Not much. On this last part, we need to wire up a click event for that button. What we're going to do is, when you click that button, we're going to traverse through each one of these elements, select out their ID. We have a data attribute for their ID on, on each li tag. You can do this with a hidden input or a text box or just a span tag whatever it doesn't matter we're just gonna use the data attribute because it's there for us to use and I like using data attributes so we're gonna reselect our button for a third time I'm gonna use dot on click you could just do dot click but I like doing on click cuz I feel like it's more readable Now if I could hit the semicolon, we're going to select all of our list items into just one object. So items equals dot sortable, I'm sorry, sort list item, list item. Then we're going to create an array that's empty item IDs equals wow ah, ones there we go now we could do several ways of actually traversing through each one of these items inside of the items object we're just gonna go for the bare bones for loop zero x item is less than items about length x plus plus and inside of our loop we're going to push an ID into our array we'll do items eq you can use eq instead of uh, square braces to get the actual jQuery object so we can access data instead of reselecting the element like most people would like to do. Story ID. I think that's enough parentheses. Yeah, that should be good. So when this completes, we should have four or five elements in our array. And to for a server approach, we do var parms equals a JSON object of stories item IDs dot join by the comma and we would pass this into a post and then use C sharp or PHP or Ruby or whatever you want to use to save that into your database. Instead, we're just going to alert item IDs dot join. Tab that out and refresh the page and let's see if it all works. I usually don't write stuff right the first time. We have a JavaScript bug. Sweet item ID is not defined so 
typo. Back over, I'm gonna run it. Try again. And so we have one, three, two, four, five. So it goes one, three, two, four, five. I set it up so that we could easily tell what our item IDs were by their original sort order. That is pretty much the, all there is to it for this. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate the time. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see on the next video, and I'll do my best to, to get it out there as quickly as I can. As always, this has been Daniel Worthy, and we'll see you on the next one.